So Grok 3 was recently announced with big fanfare that it was going to be the best large language model out there. Unfortunately, it was hidden behind the most expensive subscription that you have for X, for Twitter, and so therefore it wasn't really available to very many people. Then in a surprise move, it was made available to absolutely everybody. So Grok 3, including the deep research variant and the thinking model. So in this video, I want to test it out, ask it some gnarly questions, see how well it does. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here we are with the Grok 3 interface. Notice here you've got deep search. That's basically deep research. So that was actually the subject of my last video that I just made uh, and think so thinking uh, model uh, that is now of course all the rage with 0103 from OpenAI and of course uh, DeepSeek. So I'm going to just use Grok3 unless I know I'm doing coding or something where I want it to create a detailed report. Now this first question is really just a sanity test. Grok2 got this right. Uh, Back in the day, of course, a sanity test would be a simple question like what is the capital of France or something. Now we have to ask it more complex questions. Alice has five brothers and she has three sisters. How many sisters does Alice's brother have? Of course, the answer is four. Grok 2 got this right. Let's just make sure that Grok 3 has not gone backwards. The answer is four. So there you go. So it's got that right. So that's a good sanity test. So that so far is working. Okay, the next question is much more complex. You have two hourglasses, one that measures exactly 10 minutes and another that measures exactly five minutes. Using these two hourglasses, can you measure exactly 15 minutes? If so, explain the steps involved. Now, Grok uh, got it wrong uh, last time and uh, it gave a bit of a convoluted answer. Let's see whether Grok 3 does any better. Okay, so it says you start off by turning uh, them both over, which which actually isn't necessary. You don't need to turn the five minute one over or the 10 minute one. You don't need to turn both over. When the five minute hour glass finishes, uh, the 10 minute glass will have five minutes remaining. Flip the five again. Okay, that will be good. After the 10 minute one finishes, well, then you've got 10 minutes. Okay, at this point, 10 minutes have elapsed. And then flip the five minute one again. And that's actually the answer. You just need to flip the 10 and then the five. It's as simple as that. And when the five minute hourglass has finished, then you will have 15 minutes. That's true, but you didn't need to flip all the others. Uh, so it goes through, so let's verify it. Start both. No, you only need to start one. When the five minute hourglass finishes, flip it again. When the 10 minute hourglass finishes, flip the five minute again. When the five minute glass. So that is correct. You will get 15 minutes. However, it's not the most efficient way to do it. But well done. Now, here is a variation of that one, which no uh, LLM has actually got right so far. Uh, so I haven't featured it in my videos because no one's been able to get it right so far. You have two hourglasses, one that measures exactly seven minutes, another that measures 11 minutes. By using only the two hourglasses, can you measure exactly 15 minutes? If so, explain how. And I'm going to make it do the thinking for this one. I think it needs to think hard about this. Let's see if it can say so. Okay, so it's thought for a total of just over three minutes and if you scroll right down to the bottom of its report it basically says no you cannot measure exactly 15 minutes with these two algorithms that's the wrong answer it was kind of going in the right direction because it says here uh if we could measure 11 minutes and then add four minutes we'd reach 15 and that's the correct approach uh, but it doesn't work out how to do that i won't tell you the answer do let me know in the comments below if you work it out for yourself so there you go Good attempt as a three minutes of thinking, lots and lots of working here, but it didn't hit on the right answer. But as I said, neither is any other LLM. So this isn't a, 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 a bad thing in that sense. It's just we're not there yet in terms of the ability of these uh, models. OK, here's another one that Grok2 got wrong. You are an English teacher helping a student with an exercise. It's important that you follow these instructions precisely. Read the following text. Pick an unusual word, find a one word synonym for that word, take the synonym and reverse it. E.g. the reverse of spoon is noops. Here is the text. And if you read through that text, this is normally the word that most large language models uh, pick out as being the unusual one. Then they need to pick a synonym for that, which might be impractical, unrealistic, idealistic, something like that. And then create the reverse of that. Now, Grok2 got this wrong. It picked the right word, it picked a synonym, but it got the reversing of the letters wrong. So let's see how it does. OK, so it started to find some of the interesting words. Uh, it's going to pick uh, this one, as we said, quixotical. And then it's got dreamy and then the reverse of dreamy, Y, A, 
D-R-E-R-D. Yes, you got it right. Look at that. So it has managed to reverse that crate. D-R-E-A-M-Y. Yes, brilliant. So there you go. So that's a big improvement over Grok 2. Okay, next we'll give it a programming example. There's no point giving it the simple programming examples. You know, write a Python script to do this, write a JavaScript, because it'll just do it. So I'm not even going to try. I am going to give it a hard one, and that's I want it to write a chess engine. Now, just rather than say write a chess engine, uh, I've given it a, a, a bunch of specifications. So it gives it lots to work on. So that's what I'm hoping, because it's a pretty complicated task to write a chess engine. Now, by giving it all of these requirements, it's quite a lot here. So let me just show you. your task is to put a chess engine in C that communicates using a basic UCI universal chess protocol interface protocol. And that's what all the chess programs, including Stockfish and use and so on. And then it goes through here talking about how you should implement that, including the search functions, the UCI protocol, taking consideration the different uh, board representations and how you want to make the move generator and so on. So this is not a trivial program. Uh, and it will be interesting to see what it does. Now, I've used Replit Agent, and it had a very good stab at this, and was able to produce something that at least compiled and made a first move. So I was pretty impressed by that. Let's see what Grok 3 with thinking can do. Okay, so it's thought for a total of 2 minutes and 19 seconds. It's given me a full response here, including lots of code. Uh, in different modules, which is what part of the specification said, part of that instruction said to do it in different modules so it doesn't all get too complicated. Okay, it's given me a readme file, including a command on how to compile it. So I'm going to go ahead, cut and paste all those bits of code and see if it compiles. Okay, so I've cut and pasted those into all these different files, board.c, val.c, main.c, and so on. Unfortunately, there are some compiler errors when I try to compile it. I'll give Grok a couple of chances to fix this, so let's ask it that, about that now. It doesn't compile and then I'm just going to cut and paste directly the results from the compile there so we give it a chance to think about it okay so the good news is that now compiles so that's great and we can give it a quick sanity test here I happen to know how the UCI interface uh, works uh, is ready ready okay and then we can say go best move a7 a8 so it's moving a pawn there so let's plug it into an actual uh, chess engine and and let's see how it plays okay here i'm in cute chess qt chess qt it's written in the qt interface that's the point so it's cross platform now we need to go up here and we say we're going to play a new game and we're going to play white is going to be a cpu and i've added in the grok chess engine in there let's play it myself and let's see what happens oh what happened straight away? It did something that it doesn't like. Ah, right, A7, A8, of course, is it's trying to move a black pawn. So maybe it kind of thinks it's playing black. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt at this point. Let's stay again. Uh, I'll play human as white and we'll play uh, Grok chess engine as black. Let's see if that makes any difference. I'll make an opening move. No, now what it's trying to do, best move A7, A8. A7, A8. Oh, it's, the pawn's going the wrong way. Okay, so it doesn't actually work now I think about it. I did say earlier, oh, look, it's moving a pawn, but it, it wasn't. It's got it wrong. It's trying to move this pawn upwards, a black pawn, into the rook. So clearly some problems there. So there you go. You judge that however you want. Okay, one final test. We're going to go with deep search. This means it's going to look on the internet for things. So create a detailed report on the top Android tablets based on their specifications and price. Make sure to include tablets from Samsung, Lenovo, OnePlus and Xiaomi. Let's see what it does about that. So the idea here is that it can go off to the internet. It can look up the specifications of these things, look up the prices, come back uh, and give me a report. And it's deep because it doesn't just do one search. Once it's done some searches, it finds some answers, it reads those answers and then does some other searches based on what it read the first time around. So if it needs to find out more about a particular tablet, it can go away and search specifically for the details about those tablets. So let's see what it comes up with. OK, so it's come up with the report. It took it a minute, 71 sources it searched. OK, and so it's giving me uh, the overview about the prices, the different tablets it's talking about here. And then how it's looking at the different specifications, the Samsung, of course, the different prices here, as I said. It's comparing the display, the performance, the battery life. Conclusion. This NASA reveals a diverse range of Android tablets, each catering for different The Samsung S10 series is for those prioritizing large screens and high storage, while Lenovo's Yoga Tab Plus and OnePlus 2 offer premium performance at a mid-range price. 
Okay, so <laughs> it didn't actually recommend one for me. However, in terms of it just said, look, you, you can buy an expensive one, buy this, if you want to buy a cheap one, buy this. Um, okay, so, I mean, it did do the searching. It did come up with a list of tablets. It didn't come up with a recommendation. Uh, it just came up with uh, the information that it's found. Okay, fair enough. Okay, while we're here, let's, let's do one more time. Create a report about the best F1 driver of all time. Okay, it's done that. One minute, 37 seconds, and... Hamilton is the best F1 driver of all time. It's come up and said that. He has the most race wins and pole positions, tying with Michael Schumacher's seven world championships. And he gives you here all the details. What's interesting here is it also goes down and gives you these tables. I think this is really, really good. Look at this. Including going back to uh, Fangio. And then we've got Schumacher, Vettel, uh, Verstappen. Uh, and so number of race wins, number of starts. So that's why he's come up on top here over Michael uh, Schumacher with his win percentage though is slightly lower than Michael Schumacher. Verstappen's is higher actually. So it, it's interesting, it's, but it has given you all the information here that you could possibly want. Uh, and it's given you expert and fan ratings as well. And so based on these analysis, Lewis Hamilton is deemed the best F1 driver of all time, although debate remains vibrant. OK, so there you go. That's really, really good. And I actually quite like that. It's better than the one I think I got from Perplexity uh, in my previous uh, video. So excellent. So that's a, a much better result, I think, than the tablet searching question. This is much more definitive and lots of statistics in there that uh, justify the report. That's a good one. OK, so Grok 3, clearly an improvement over Grok 2. And having a thinking model and a deep research model is also a great plus. We'll see whether it stays free. Are they going to move it again behind a subscription? I don't know what their thinking is at the moment, but while it's available, it's certainly worth checking out. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.